Morning all, we are out to Derby. It's a Thursday morning, it's about nine o'clock. I'm the first one of five that I am riding today. And we're gonna start off with this, Lexmoto LXR in black and gold. Doesn't that look sweet? I love these bikes, absolutely love these LXRs. Now, for those that are wondering between the difference between this and the LXS, I've covered this loads of times, but LXR, 820 millimeters to the top of the seat. On the LXS, you're looking at 790. So the LXS is a slightly smaller bike. So if you are anything from five foot two to about five foot eight, LXS, if you're over five foot 10, up to about six foot four, the LXR is gonna be the bike for you. Very similar in shape. This one's slightly longer in the wheelbase. Colors are slightly different, but for all intensive purposes, same engine. Right, let's get on this now. Once we sit on it, LXR has analog and digital display. Side stand only on both bikes. Telltales on the left, miles an hour here, and your rev counter is in the center. Now, with the LXRs and the LXSs, big tank on these, believe it or not, five liters just about registers on the bottom of the tank. So we put five in for test ride mileage. You've got adjustable brake lever, all your standard controls, horn, indicators, lights, hazards, pass light to the rear on the left, all your lights here. So here is your daytime light. In the middle, you'll get your eagle eyes and your running light. Over here, you've got your angel eye lights on. I always ride and I do, and I say to everybody, have your headlights on dip beam all the time. It's gonna make you easier to see. Loads of room in those mirrors. You can just about see the edge of my glove in that one and this one, absolutely nothing. There's my shoulder in there. So good view off of those mirrors. They are tiny, but you do get a good view to the rear. But as I say, do your shoulder checks. That is always the one thing I always say to everybody. Now, six speed box on this and it runs like an absolute dream. I love riding these black and gold LXRs. They do look the business and it doesn't look like a 125. Once you roll in, there we go, you've got one bar of fuel. So five litres will get you about one bar. And it's I think around about 13 or 14 litre tank on these as well. So it's a big old tank. As always, we're gonna go out, we're gonna have a run, keep the revs low, and 40 mile an hour for the first 500 miles or three months. That is your service regime. Once you've done that, you can have a service. Then you can open the bike up to 50, maximum 55, until you get your second service, which is due 3,000 miles or six months after your first service. But for the first 500 miles or three months, take it easy on the engine. Do not rag it. It's a brand new engine. Treat it like a baby. It's got to learn to walk and then run and then go hyperspeed. Now, the average speed on one of these, you're looking around about 60 to 65 mile an hour. You can get a lot more out of it. Chatting with a guy the other day and he said, I managed to get 72 out of my LXR, which is good. He said, but I was absolutely pegging that throttle. It's a 125 at the end of the day. Your average speed on most 125s is gonna be 60 to 65 mile an hour max. Right, six gear and we're sitting at 40 mile an hour and just over five and a half, uh, yeah, five and a half thousand RPM on this. Good view of the road, watching the mirrors, keeping an eye on everybody. Now, someone said to me, he's, uh, he's commented on the uh, 50cc WK Scrambler and I'm doing 30 mile an hour and he went, oh, that is really, really dangerous. I have just done my CBT on a 50. I think 30 mile an hour is dangerous. It's not if you are aware of your surroundings. Now, most of the roads in Milton Keynes are all dual carriageway. So what is the difference between either being on a 50cc, on a scooter that does 50, uh, 50cc scooter, 50cc bike, they all do 30 mile an hour, <coughs> or being on a pedal cycle. And a lot of people cycle across Milton Keynes. We do have redways, but a lot of people use the main road. And if you're doing sort of 20 mile an hour on your bicycle people are going to go round you but it's not dangerous it's just you have to be aware <coughs> uh, 
and I obviously had my eye on that one that was coming up behind me. So I watched him in the mirror, that's why I was looking down there all the time. But, 50cc bike on a dual carriageway, 30 mile an hour, not a problem if you are aware of your surroundings and that's what you need to do. Once you get to 17, obviously you get a 125, you can go a bit faster. Or if you don't like going 30 mile an hour, use the public transport, get a bus. If it's not for you, get a bus. But if you've just done your CBT, and they let most people go and do a day's course, do a CBT, never ridden a bike before, they go out on the road and go, oh, it's really dangerous. Get some extra training in, <clears throat> or just go out riding and find some quiet roads but it's all about being prepared for the white one coming up the inside. There he is, watching, watching your mirrors at every junction, shoulder checking, and making sure that you keep an eye on the road. <coughs> Nothing dangerous about motorcycling at all. A bike is not dangerous, it's the person that sat on it that is the danger. And if you don't feel comfortable, then don't use a dual carriageway. Use a single road. I never have a problem, I've been doing this for nearly, God, I'd say 54 years now. I'm 59, I've been riding for 54 years, I started at 5 years old. 16, I had a 50cc, I did 30 mile an hour. 17, I went straight onto a 250, passed me test and went straight to a 900cc, instantly. And everyone's like, oh it will kill you. I never had a problem riding big bikes and I've only had three bad crashes in my entire career. So that is good going because you need to do the extra training. <coughs> but, and I would say, if you can afford it, now if you're a, a CBT biker, go and do some extra training where you're riding school. If you're a big biker, and a lot of them would back me up on this, go and do a ROSPA course, do an IAM course, which is the Institute of Advanced Motorists, or you can get them free, do a bike down course or a bike safe course, which is normally organised by your local police. And I do multiple of these every year. I've had one two weeks ago, went out and did the bike down course, and believe it or not, they still picked up on some of the stuff that I needed to do. You, know, you need to do this, do that, do that. So you're never ever perfect when you ride a bike. You do pick up the bad habits. So that is the thing to do. Get yourself some extra training. So we've got 4.1 on the bike. We're doing well. Bike is running absolutely lovely like they all do. Absolutely love these LXRs. And as I say, with every bike we ride test for the customer to check because your problems are going to be showing up in the first 10 miles. If a bike's got a problem, 10 miles in, you're going to have issues with that bike. Back brake, combined braking, and it pulls down, yes, perfectly. So we tend to put a bike through its paces, but a lot of dealers will only quick ride around the block, job done, shoulder check, second shoulder check, always do at least two shoulder checks, it will keep you covered, but brand new tyres you do take it a little bit easy on the corners for the first 50 miles on these new tyres, they are a lot better than the horrible nylon ones that we used to have a couple of years ago, so we are getting some decent tyres being put on the 125s now, but obviously we're merging, Get that shoulder check in, shift out into your lane, job done. Now, on these at 40 mile an hour, I will always sit position one. I won't occupy the main part of the road. Reason being, it allows a car room to get around you. And people say, oh, you should be riding out in the middle of the road, make a move. If that car's coming in a little bit fast behind me, he's got traffic in the outside lane and he's constantly mirror checking, next thing you know, he is upon me. If I'm sitting in position one, he's got at least room to swerve. If I'm sat out in the middle of the lane, I am getting crunched from behind. So I do ride position one all the time at 40. If I'm on a big bike, then I'm going to be out in position two and three and dominating the lane. So that is just my feel. Some people say, oh, you should be out there. Blah, blah, blah. That is the way I ride and you're not going to change it, unfortunately. 
Now, what's gone on this week while I'm sitting here waffling away and we're riding this LXR, what's gone on this week? Well, we put the, uh, the ride video up Tuesday of me going to the new bike meet at Loughton and I caught up with Pilly Partner and obviously Guy from Learn to Ride and Will. Wednesday, which was last night, we managed to jump on the uh, the live stream, sit in the side chat with Peaky Biker, Mark from Leeds, Crazy Legs on the Bike, and Mr Fish, yeah, and Zed Ed as well. So it was a really good interesting stream last night, if you haven't seen it you can go and watch it on rerun. So go and search the Peaky Biker and look at the uh, Wednesday night live stream. We do one on a Friday night and it is adult content, the same as it is on Peaky's on a Wednesday, it is adult content. If you're offended by bad language, don't watch. But it's very interesting to see all the biking community getting together and the comments that they, uh, they put up. Shoulder check again. And I do tend to move my head around a lot when I'm on a bike for that reason. I never ever trust the mirror on a bike. And the speed that some of these cars barrel down here, they don't do 70 mile an hour. If you've seen my walk runs to Silver Sausage, you know I don't do 70 mile an hour down here. So today we are taking out the uh, LXR. Then I'm out on a WKSX125. Now that came in non-running bike. Now he's obviously serviced it at 600 miles which instantly put it out of warranty because he didn't do it in the time required and he's came in for his second service now it should be 500 miles, 3,000 miles and then 6,000. It's actually got five and a half thousand and it's in on second service so well out of warranty now but it came in as a non-runner. First thing I said well you're going to need to change the spark plug because the spark plug is going to be absolutely mullered and then you're going to need I'm going to wait for this car to move because I need to get over come on little car move 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 thank you very much so spark changed the oil oil was absolutely minging in it hardly anything in the engine and it still wouldn't run so we go into what is called our repair loop so fuel, air, spark, tappets. I said work 5,000. It's going to probably be tappets. I'll do the tappets anyway. I'm going to work the loop backwards. So we did the tappets. Exhaust massively over tight. And the uh, inlet was flapping around like an absolute proverbial. There is a tappet video that I'm going to be doing on a Titan very, very shortly. So if you don't know how to do tappets, I will show you. Shoulder checks again. So yeah, I'm going to be showing you how to do tappets, so very easy, 0.4 on the inlet, 0.6 and above on the exhaust. <coughs> Did the tappets, still wouldn't fire. So first thing you do, you pop the injector out, 8mm bolt holds that injector, he was in the wrong lane and he's just ducked in behind me. <coughs> so whack the injector out turn the bike over, do not put your finger over the injector because it pumps fuel and no supply to the injector. Ah! Turn the ignition on and off, on and off, on and off. You can normally hear the fuel tank pump prime, no fuel tank. Mm. So we start tracking the wiring from the fuse board out and believe it or not there's the connector with a really bad broken wire and uh, the connector was all gummed up as well, so cleaned it up, resoldered the connection, put it back together, put the new fuse in, fired the bike, it fired up first time. So, bike's back together and I am taking that out, that took me about an hour to find that. And as I said to the customer, I said, as you've uh, had your service done, we'll do the tappets free of charge for you. Tappets are normally chargeable, and we didn't even charge him for doing his bad connection. So. He's a happy, happy customer, another RB solved bike, but if you have a problem with your bike, it's normally going to be one of those four, it's going to be fuel, it's going to be the air. Check your airbox, make sure it's not full of water. 
take the spark plug out, put the HT lead in it, rest it on the cylinder head and turn the bike over, you should have a spark. A bike requires fuel, air and spark to run. And then if it runs like an absolute bag of pants, you know it's going to be the tappets every time. If not, then it's going to be electrical and you start, obviously, going into uh, compression testing, leak-off testing and diagnostics or scan the bike up see if it froze any fault codes so LXR done 7.8 on the clock so it's going to be 8 by I get back to the garage final ride of 2 miles to do a couple of days before we hand the bike over but the LXR is running sweet as a nut front brake is good rear brake is good combined braking and I'm going back to get my cup of coffee and I believe Bex has got me a McDonald's wrap this morning happy days so next test ride watch out for that one as always like share comment subscribe leave us a thumbs up leave a comment down below and the new thing now you can buy me a coffee because you know how many coffees I normally drink so link below to buy me a coffee if you want to go and treat RB to a coffee and I will give you a shout out if you do on one of my videos but until then be well ride safe and from RB it's a big goodbye from me